This is not a movie. These men are not actors. And what you will witness for the first time Sunday, February 21st, you will never forget. Drug dealing is a risky business. You'll find out just how risky it can be. If you've ever wondered what it's like to be an undercover cop in a crack house raid, you'll find out Sunday, February 21st, 11 a.m., when you tune into Community Focus, right here on Fox 66. Welcome to Community Focus, offering new insights into the issues and concerns important to our community. Presented by Fox 66 and brought to you in part by McLaren Regional Medical Center. And now, here's your host, Tom Crown. Good morning and once again, welcome to Community Focus at again our new time, 11 o'clock. Uh, this program this morning will address two important issues that plague our community, drugs and crime. According to the National Clearinghouse for Alcohol and Drug Information, the latest figures show that over 6,000 deaths for 1991, 3,200 of those deaths were from crack cocaine. The Flint Police Department's Special Operations Division has a 30-man undercover unit in the fight against crack cocaine. In leading that team is Lieutenant John Steele, our guest this morning. Thank you so much. I know you have a busy schedule, but thank you for appearing today sure. on Community Focus. Lieutenant Steele is a 14-year veteran of the Flint Police Department. He began with the police as a police service officer, and from uh, 87 until 89, he was a sergeant in the patrol of neighborhood support, uh, patrol division, I guess, right? And uh, what we're going to do today and what you're going to see is something that uh, I don't think most stations around here have followed too well, and that is we're going to have a program where we follow you and your team on an actual bust of a crack cocaine house. And, you know, I, riding with you in that van uh, as we approached that house, there was a lot of feeling of trepidation there. How do you guys, number one question I think to throw out to you, what goes on in your mind as you're approaching uh, one of these houses? Well, there's always the uh, threat of violence, of course. Um, the other things are, uh, you know, what happens if somebody runs, uh, how are you going to get in the house? The un you know, you're always worried about the unforeseen and planning for the unplanned, I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's what we worry about. Um, a lot of different things have, have gone right and gone wrong. Mm -hmm. You go over those things in your head. You want to make sure you don't want to do something wrong, uh, like maybe what happened, you know, a few years ago or something. And um, just uh, trying to keep everybody safe. For both sides, the guys both you're sides. trying to yeah. you know, take care of. Now, what are some of the ages of the people that you're seeing out there that are involved in illicit uh, drug activity? I'd have to say, for the most part, uh, they're. Uh, mid to late teens, a lot of uh, street dealers, uh, mid to late teens, and then um, the most active are probably uh, you know late teens, early 20s. But um, we've had uh, people, and I've personally had cases on people that have been like 65 years old, so. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, old timers are out there, to <laughs> <laughs> just an extra way to bring in a few bucks or something. Is that, is that really what it amounts to, is the money? Just a quick way to make bucks? Yeah, it's a quick way to make uh, money, and um, there's a lot of people that need money, and uh, it's an equal opportunity employer right now. <laughs> you got that right. Um, what kind of drugs are you seeing most out there right now? I'd have to say crack cocaine is probably uh, uh, what we're seeing most, but I think that's probably because we're concentrating our efforts mostly on crack cocaine. Um, it's probably the most devastating drug we have right now, and uh, that's the reason for our concentration on it. Of course, marijuana has been around and always will be around for uh, quite some time, and I think it's a very popular drug. Uh, we try and take whatever effort uh, uh, we can uh, mm -hmm. to enforce uh, laws against nar uh, marijuana. But like I said, uh, cocaine, crack cocaine is probably the, the most severe drug, so that's what we see most of. The, uh, the other question is, and I'm sure a lot of people think, well, this is confined to a certain, certain socioeconomic status. Uh, is that true? No, not really. I mean, uh, there's a lot of people that, that uh, try to escape from the problems that they're you know, encountering because of maybe their uh, poor uh, socioeconomic uh, status. 
and um, crack cocaine uh, is a very powerful drug, mm -hmm. and um, it is relatively cheap. Uh, you know, for a hit of crack cocaine is uh, ten to twenty dollars uh, usually. How long does the high last with something? Well, very, I've very you know talked to other you know people that use it, and um, they indicate that. Uh, it could be over with, uh, the good effects could be over with in about five minutes. Any warnings for people out there who might be considering using that stuff? Oh yeah, stay away from it. You it got is it. dangerous stuff. Yeah. In a few moments, uh, we're going to be riding with the Lieutenant John Steele and his crew, 30-man crew, uh, part of what you're going to see today. And also, one other officer that you will see is uh, Lieutenant uh, Sergeant Hagler, or, or pardon me, Sergeant Hagler of the Flint Police Department. All the other officers that you will see on this, uh, the following segments will uh, not have their faces shown. We will electronically uh, disguise their faces. And by the way, uh, coming up, there they are, running into that house, uh, Lieutenant Steele in the background there. That's coming up on our next segment here on Community Focus. A big thank you to uh, a gentleman named Eli uh, video Creations, area code 313-96-VIDEO. Give him a call. He does all kinds of variety of uh, video editing. Also to our uh, cameraman, Carl, who uh, had a shaky camera there a few times running into that house. And if someone has an idea, suspects that there is uh, illegal drug activity going on in their neighborhood, there is a number that they can call, correct? Yes. There's a 24-hour uh, drug hotline that the Flint Police Department has established. It's uh, area code 313 for Flint, 239-4800. It's a recording, and uh, we'll take down whatever information you have. We'd uh, like to get as much information, uh, vehicles, license plate numbers, description of the vehicles. If you know the person's name, give us the name, the address, how the house is described, how they package it, how they sell it, what they sell. As In much information that you get, uh, it really helps us out uh, because we can direct our efforts towards the... Uh, uh, those things that are uh, becoming a nuisance in town. You got that right. Uh, my, hit, my hat's off to you. You guys do a great job. Thanks Stay lot, tuned. Tom. Thank you. Stay tuned. You don't want to miss this. Coming up next, a raid on a crack cocaine house here in the Flint area with Flint Police Department's Special Operations Division right after this timeout. This is Tom Crown for Community Focus. Good morning and once again, welcome to our program. You know, it's no secret that drugs are a major problem for any large metropolitan area. Uh, Flint is no exception. The Flint Police Department has set up a special task force to combat this growing scourge. And today, you will witness the Flint Police Department, your police department, in action. Uh, before every raid, Special Operations has a briefing so that every officer knows what his duties are. Well, let me uh, uh Controlled by at uh, 2018 uh, Mount Elliot uh, today, crack cocaine. It's a yellow uh, oh, one story house, trimmed in brown. Nine houses south of Hamilton. Lieutenant Steele diagrams the location of the house. He gives a brief description of the interior and a word of caution to his men. It's also supposed to be a handgun in the house. I expect uh, two minor children, probably two adult males so far. Emotions ride high on the drive to the suspected crack house. There's a feeling of excitement and fear as we approach the residence. Inside. My cameraman, uh, can you get a shot of this here? No. You want the no, lead no, cars? No, 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 that sliding door. Can you get up there? Uh... <coughs> okay, this is it right here. Yeah. See the house here? The yellow house. house. The brown trim next to the blue and white one. Right. That's it. Okay. Guns drawn, Lieutenant Steele and company rush the house, not knowing if they'll need a hail of bullets or whether their surprise attack will work.
Seconds seem like hours, until two officers slowly walk from the house. Drug dealing is a risky business. Evidence the doorway, buckshot, either from a disgruntled customer or a competitive dealer. Well, the house is secured, the rest have been made. Let's go inside. Special operations were lucky this time. The suspected dealers were caught completely by surprise. And Sergeant Hagler points out why their job is so risky. What do you have here? SKS uh, 7.62 by 39 military assault rifle. It's what the uh, Russians and Chinese use. Looks like quite a dangerous gun. It is. It holds at least 10 rounds. Semi auto. You can crank them off as fast as you can pull the trigger. So these guys mean business? Sure appears that way. What, what's going on here, Chief? Right here is some rounds from a 9mm. And I'm not quite sure if we look around, we might be able to find a 9mm in this house somewhere. So there's more gun stashed away here? A possibility, you know. Right now, they wouldn't have rounds if they had another automatic or another gun somewhere around here. So we're just looking around, so can we find a gun and some more i got to ask you something. When you walk into a house like this, what, what type of feelings do you have, knowing that this stuff is laying around? You know, it's a job. Uh, you got to do it, even though you know. You hire do pump a little bit, you know, and drilling and do flow. Well, I'll bet. It's a job you got to do it. Take a second grade to do it. You married? Yes, I am. How's the wife feel about this? Uh, she don't like it very well. <laughs> but uh, it's a job, and she respect that. You ever see turnarounds in this, where you get somebody that you arrest and... Uh, they come clean, they, they don't go back to this type of lifestyle? Yes. Every now and then you see some. That's got to be a plus. It is. It's a good feeling. Was it loaded? Yeah. It was ready for bear, huh? It was ready. Just had to pull the trigger. Well, the guys, the chances you guys take, I tell you, I, I take my hands off to you. I, I tell you right now, I wouldn't want this job. Well, somebody's, somebody's got to do it. Somebody is. Yeah. And you're elected. I guess so. Well, what happens now with this? Well, we're going to hold it for fingerprints and see who we can attach it to, and then uh, we'll turn it in, and eventually it'll probably be destroyed by the state police. Okay. End up uh, as part of a car someday. Or an anchor. This house was a lot of clips. Might be a 9mm around here somewhere. Keep finding clips and everything. Who's in the driveway? Whose car's in the driveway? That's my friend's car. Your friend's car? Where's he at? I don't know. Who's a... Uh, is this your tennis shoe? My tennis shoe? Yeah. Uh-huh. Are these the keys to the car? Uh, I don't know. They're in your shoes, but you don't know. Oh, they're my house keys. They're my keys to my car. A lot of stuff in that purse, huh? Yeah, a little bit of everything. Uh, looks like a lady's purse. We'll check for some identification and see if we can find out if it belongs to this house or if somebody left it behind or possibly it was brought from some other residence and left inside here. Is that for fingerprints? Well, combination of things. When you touch evidence, you don't want your fingerprints being on it. And also, as you can see, a lot of the things around here are awfully dirty. And so to protect ourselves from the germs. And the right. I noticed colors is... Uh, Oh, is just playing on TV right now. Except these are not actors. We're going to take a small break here. We'll come right back. On the opposite side of the kitchen and on the top corner shelf, a laboratory scale. Similar to the type used in weighing pharmaceutical drugs. Now, important evidence like this scale first must be photographed exactly where it was found. All evidence such as a scale is either photographed or logged prior to removal. Along with the scale, another important piece of evidence. Four packaging baggies, uh, 
They, Empty. Yeah, these ones have been used up, but they appear to have some cocaine residue in them. So they've been used at least once before. What, do they reuse them again? Yeah, they, they may. Uh, it appears that these were opened and used, so if they were saving them, uh, you can see little specks of cocaine dust in there. Oh, yeah, I can. They were going to uh, reuse them, sell them again. Birthday boy! Is it right out of the house, usually? Yeah, I'm sure they were selling right out of the house here. People would just come up and knock and be able to buy one or two rocks at a time, whatever they needed. Gotcha. gotcha. In the living room, Lieutenant Steele continues his search for evidence. Nearby, the TV blares out colors, a nihilistic film of drug wars and gang violence to entertain the suspects on the floor. He's still reading the Miranda rights? You really, it's you really, it's a it's a game of hide and seek. You got to try to find where the hell they they hit it. <laughs> he hit it in his pocket. So he <laughs> wasn't too much hiding and seeking there. But yeah, he had some money. He had a lot of money hidden somewhere. I see now why you wear gloves. <laughs> While animal control removes one of two pit bulls from the suspected drug house, Sergeant Hagler and company find evidence that more guns could be hidden somewhere inside the house. That's not a happy camper, is it? The one gun. Only six rounds missing, so there's probably a gun hidden somewhere. No, wait a minute. You got a rifle over there. You have nine millimeter ammunition, and then you've got 357 laying around here too, somewhere yeah, probably. There's, uh, one of their friends, or they have one hidden somewhere, it's on somebody that's working for them. Because there's only six rounds missing, that's enough just to load a 357 Magnum revolver. So there's something stashed around this house somewhere, right? Very well could be, or it could be out on the street, and some of their employees, uh, whoever's working for them, might be carrying it. I got you. And in the meantime, both suspects on the living room floor are still enjoying their favorite film, Colors. That is until Lieutenant Steele arrives for further interrogation. But I never did. One thing I ain't got changed was just the address. You know, my name didn't get changed out of it. Because it was my guy I sold it to my girl. You know, before she pushed me. I sold it to her. She related to a. Well, we'll leave the two suspects to entertain Lieutenant Steele. And in the meantime, Sergeant Hagler has some candid photos to show us in the kitchen. Uh, Sergeant Hagler, you made quite a find here. Yeah, one of the officers just came up with some photographs. It shows uh, two of the people probably involved in this uh, little drug network of theirs uh, posing with uh, semi-automatic pistols, uh, kind of showing and playing with their power that they have in their hands. They got some... Uh, will you be able to define who those pick the people are in the pictures? Well, one of them will probably be able to see. The other one's kept his face covered pretty well. Uh, it's just a little game they're playing here, and... The man with the most uh, firepower is the toughest guy. The head the honcho. He's the main guy. How long do people like this usually last? It all depends. There's so so many of them sometimes that uh, they may go on for several years, or if they're unlucky, they might be caught uh, right when they start. Just depends. I'll see if we can uh, locate them. Uh, recidivism rate. They end up coming back out pretty soon. Usually, pretty quick. How does that make you feel? Well, regardless of uh, how much time they get through the court systems, we still have a job to do, and we'll do our job 100%, and it's up to everyone else in the system to do theirs the same. We do what we can. Sergeant Hagler, what would you like to see change? Well, I would like to see uh, these guys get uh, punishment that uh, equals what their crimes are. A uh, little more time in jail, a little less uh, time in uh, the YMCA, and a little less time on probation and parole. A little more time to think about what they did. Absolutely. All right, and this is uh, this is a big catch of the day. This this is why why they come in here. What is this stuff? This is crack cocaine that's packaged for sale. There's five individual, individual packages inside this plastic. How much are we talk in street value? It's about twenty dollars a piece. So there's a hundred dollars worth here totally. 
So this is it. 100 bucks of crack cocaine. Uh, there's probably more here somewhere else, right? Hopefully the officers are still searching. Are you going to get some? Okay. It's kind of ironic, uh, Lieutenant, that uh, <laughs> when you came into the house, uh, these guys were watching colors. Yeah, something to look up to. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, they, they, you think this is what they want to emulate? What uh, what they want to be? Yeah, some guys, you know, yeah, they think that's that's cool stuff. They like it. These guys are probably something like that, you know, a lot of flash and no something. Do you, no substance. Do you think that, uh, that that they kind of uh, that this is exciting for them today? Yeah, I think they'll probably brag about it a little bit to their friends. The other thing is that it'll wear off probably when the charges come down. <laughs> <laughs> what happens now? Where do these guys go? Well, we're gonna take them in, book them, make sure where they are, who they say they are, interview them if they want to talk. May lodge them in the jail, maybe not, depending on uh, you know the, the circumstances. If we could. If we can, if we can track them down again, if we think we can track them down again, we'll release them until we get another warrant for them, right. and then uh, take them to court. Where do you think they'll go from there? Back on the street again? Yeah, they'll be back. They'll be back here. And I don't know about their background. How many of these guys, the way they check out to uh, get out of the business, is uh, end up on the slab? Oh yeah, a lot of them. A lot of them end up, you know, there's a lot of people that end up getting shot and crippled that you don't, you know, you, you don't see a lot of their remnants. You know, they, they kind of fade off into the mist, I guess, but, uh, you know, some some are dead. Of course, you hear about them. Those are bigger news stories. But the guys that, that get shot and, uh, you know, they're crippled, you know, you hear a small piece in the paper, maybe a small thing on TV, but rarely. You know, and there's a lot of people that you can see, you know, there's buckshot on the outside of this house yeah, here, you know, I mean... Uh, uh, violence is nothing new to the, those guys. So, and they had, you know, they were loaded. They were ready to go. Yeah. Probably, maybe, maybe not so much against the police as uh, somebody else might be coming in. We got to close this. We got to wrap it up. But uh, is there anything you can say for our viewers out there today? Somebody that might be thinking of uh, going into this line of work? Just stay out. <laughs> just, uh, just say no, huh? <laughs> Otherwise, you're gonna see this guy. Mm hmm. Where, where is that at? Bird shot, Where'd that come from? Somebody shot in through the front door, I'd imagine. Well, they didn't like the stuff they delivered? They must not like something. Maybe it was uh, competitors. The marketplace is tough out there. Would you say this is a risky business? I'd say so. I would say so. I understand one of the guys uh, you're resting today is his birthday. Yeah, it is. You have something in common. It's my birthday, too. Happy birthday. Well, thank you. <laughs> This is Tom Ground for Community Focus. We'll see you in two weeks. Just stay out. <laughs> just, uh, just say no, huh?